So this week at my school, all the new medical students start. And I've spoken to a couple of the new incoming first years, but they all seem to have kind of the same kind of question. Is it hard? Is it fun? How should I study? With which application should I study? And so I decided that it might be beneficial to some of the new medical students starting soon, congratulations by the way, to give you some tips, some things I wish I knew before I started medical school. Number one is it's not actually that hard. Most people make it, most people graduate and become doctors. For US MD mainland schools, the graduation rate has actually stayed fairly constant and fairly high. The four year graduation rate is at 84% and the six year graduation rate is at 96%. So really only 4% of students who start medical school at a US MD mainland school, because this is where I got this kind of information from, drop out. Also many students, I know a couple students from my school that dropped out from the, in, from the very beginning, drop out for non-academic reasons. It's not because they can't cut it academically, it's because they have personal things going on in their life or they realize that, hey, medical school just isn't for me. It's in the medical school's best interest, right, to keep you around. They aren't trying to weed you out or anything like that. The weeding out is really done in your undergraduate education. The weeding out is done with the MCAT and your organic chemistry class. In medical school, you have advisors, support systems, options to retake exams, options to retake years. They're really giving you every opportunity and every chance they can to make you a doctor. Getting in really is the hardest part. You do belong in medical school. You do belong treating patients. You do belong as a doctor. So this isn't one of my major tips, but a few quick studying tips I have for those just starting out in medical school. For the first couple months, maybe one or two months, seriously, just relax. Don't worry too much about your studying technique or study strategies or Anki. I know I'm saying that. I'll be shot by the Anki gods. Shit! Oh my goodness. But really don't worry about it. This is a huge step in your life. Try different study techniques, see which fit, make new friends, explore the new city or location you're in if you're in a new city or location. This is a big moment in life. These are gonna be a big four years and you're gonna have more than enough time to study and grind with the books. Tip number two for studying is cramming will not work in medical school. Plus you really don't want to cram. This information is important information for you to know, a good amount of it at least, not all of it, but a good amount of it is important information to know. And it's important because you're gonna be using this information to help real living, breathing people and not just to get an A on the test. Mini study tip number three is understanding will always trump memorization. And I actually have a pretty good post, I think on my eight favorite study techniques that I'll link somewhere around here. Tip number two is enjoy the journey. This was something that was said to me by a bunch of older doctors and two even mentioned that I should actually keep a journal and write down everything that happens to me during medical school. And they say this because it goes pretty quickly and that's one of the reasons I actually make not YouTube videos like this but other YouTube videos that kind of talk about what I was feeling when I went on my rotations because most of the time it's a feeling of, I can't believe I actually get to do this. This is really cool. I get to like treat people and talk to people and they let me do doctor stuff and really I don't know that much. I don't remember the kind of cool events and feelings that I've had over these four years. What happens is, is sometimes we start to think as what is the next step? And the problem with the seemingly perpetual education of medical school and becoming a doctor is we're always looking to that next step. When you're in college, you think about being in med school. When you're in med school, you think about being a resident. When you're a resident, you think about being an attending physician and it can go on from there. How about instead, when you're in medical school, you realize this is great. This is a great fun time. You will never get this chance again to devote this much time to learning the basic information about the human body. So for years one and two of med school, you're making lifelong friends or hopefully lifelong friends. You're learning things that you're never gonna be able to learn with this much detail again in your life about the human body. Years three and four of med school, you're actually in the hospital. You're actually seeing patients. And you don't have the real responsibilities or kind of time limitedness, is that a word, of a resident or an attending physician. So you have time to really get to know the patients, to really learn about your patients and learn about why you're treating them this way, to learn about what makes them feel good, what makes them feel bad, to learn about kind of the intricacies of treating people. You also get a chance to see many different fields of medicine. Kind of as you get farther in medicine, usually you get into a narrower and narrower and narrower path or a more specialized path. But right now you get to see all the different branches of medicine, all the different opportunities you can have for a medical career. You won't have this option again when you go to residency or fellowship or get a faculty position. Think about the number of people that want to be where you are right now. You fought and you grinded and now you are here. Take a second and realize you did a good job. You're smart, you belong here. Someone in your life is definitely very proud of you for getting to where you got right now. Tip number three is the actual content isn't that hard, it's the amount of content that is hard. Really the content is mostly straightforward and logical. The problem is all 
a semester's worth of college information is stuffed into like two or three weeks in medical school. You'll hear the expression again and again that you are drinking out of the fire hose, and you are. The best strategy I've found for fighting this overflow of information is number one, realizing you're not gonna know everything. You're not gonna be able to remember every single detail that comprise this medicine. I don't think anyone can do that. And number two is to plan out what you wanna learn. Plan out what's the most important things you wanna learn and schedule those times to learn those things. The way you learned in college is most likely gonna be different from the way you learn and do well in medical school. It's just the amount of information you have to get to know and to learn about is just so much more. Tip number four is find an upper year mentor. We're pretty cool. I think we're pretty cool. I mean, I'm just, this is me just starting an upper year because I'm now a third year medical student, but I think we're pretty nice and helpful. We just went through it, right? We just did the two years that you guys are gonna do. We can probably give you better advice than the professional advisors can do, and even people on the internet can give you because the upper year met people at your school, the upper years at your school, went through the specific things and learning things around your school, which is important because every school is different. Upper years are gonna be your best bet for getting information about how to do well at your school. The only thing I would keep in mind, the only caveat is I would remember that you shouldn't really just go to just one upper year person. An upper year person is still a different person and these people have different study strategies and different techniques. It might not necessarily be that this person's advice is bad, but it might be that this person's advice is bad for you. So if you talk to a couple different upper years and kind of collate all their different advice and information, you'll be able to find the kind of piece of information that helps you and sticks. So some ways you can find an upper year is just ask friends of friends, ask the school or ask the advisor, or just email someone who's an admin at your school and say, listen, I want to get connected with an upper year just for general advice. And I'm sure they'll connect you with someone. And the other thing you can do is you could join a club. If you're at a club, there's going to be upper years probably running that club. So they'll be able to talk to you about and give you advice about medical school. Tip number five is medical schools are collaborative, not competitive. So turn to your left, turn to your right. Both of those people will probably still be here in four years and both of those people will probably be your friends. My school has like a collaborative chat group. We have a collaborative Google Drive where we share notes and information and stuff like that. People freely give out their study guides, pre-made flashcards, uh, notes, everything like that. No one's holding the information. No one's trying to beat anyone else. And it's an important distinction, right, to make that it's collaborative because not only in school and learning, but you guys are gonna be working together in the future as part of a healthcare team. You guys are gonna be treating and helping living, breathing people. Medical schools know this, which is why they are implementing more and more pass-fail. Most likely, your school will be pass-fail if it's a USMD kind of school. If it's pass-fail, there's no comparison between you and the other students, so there's no reason to compete against. My school, for example, only puts students into thirds. So there's a top third, a middle third, and a bottom third. But beyond that, there's really no ranking system. If you're the top 1% of all students, it doesn't really matter because you're going to be categorized in the, in the top 33% of all students. Tip number six is keep your wellness habits. Now, unfortunately, this wellness phrase seems almost comical to me at this point because it seems to be thrown around on every med school website. I get an email like once a week about keeping your wellness and stuff like that. So it seems a little silly, but really you need to be the one who's in charge of your own wellness. And this is gonna be even more important as you go through residency and go become an attending physician. Do you exercise a couple times a week? Good, don't stop that. Do you eat and cook healthy food? Good, don't stop that. Take time at least once a week to do nothing, to chill, to do something you find fine, you find fine, you find fun, good. Don't stop doing that. Hopefully you have some healthy habits before you started medical school. Keep those habits during medical school because if you lose them, it's gonna be harder and harder and harder to reintegrate those because unfortunately you get busier and busier and busier as you go through medical school and residency and so on. If you don't have that many healthy habits and you wanna try and start some, try and start them before you're in medical school or try and start them in your first couple months of medical school when things are a little bit more relaxed and not as high paced and high intensity. So what I would do is I would say, find a fun hobby that involves exercise and do it at least one time a week. Second thing I would say is just drink water, don't drink anything else and do meal prep. And I have another video on kind of how I manage my stress and kind of keep my cognitive performance at a peak and I'll link that up here. And the final tip, tip number seven, is patients are your best teachers. Patients are your ultimate destination. They are your ultimate test, and they are your ultimate teacher. This is why you are going to med school. This is what it means to be a doctor. Taking good care of people, taking good care of your patient. Unique experiences that you have with your patients will shape who you are as a doctor, 
and a person. Make sure to listen to your patients. Listen to the people you're helping. Experiences with these patients will actually solidify this sciencey or clinical information in your brain. Yes, I know asthma is narrowing of the airways and you should hear wheezing and it's some annoying combination and interactions of interleukins and cytokines, but that information seems to me just information in my head, or at least it did seem like just information in my head until I had an experience on the pulmonology pediatric unit a couple weeks ago. I was dealing with a couple patients that had really, really, really bad asthma in an inpatient survey. And I was talking to these people and I was learning about, oh, this drug makes me feel better. This drug makes me feel worse. This drug does nothing at all. This is what how I know when I'm feeling really sick. This is how I know when I'm feeling better. I remember there was a question that was like, what drug do you give to severe asthmatics? And my mind didn't go to the flashcard. My mind didn't go to practice questions. My mind actually went to one patient that I was with a lot during my weeks kind of on this pediatric rotation and how he dealt with this asthma and what medications he took to make it better. And that's why I got the question right. Cause I remembered, oh, this is the person that had really severe asthma and they had to take this medication to make them feel better. And I got that question right. Because it's, it's of course, it's vitally important that you listen and learn from your patients to be a good caring human and a good caring doctor, but also realize that when you focus on your patients, when you really learn about them and their backstory and what medications they're taking and why they're taking the medications and how they feel, that information is much more likely to stick because you're relating this information that's very ethereal to real life people. And luckily, most schools are actually shifting to have you do patient education earlier in your medical school career. Patients aren't only better teachers than textbooks, but they're also much more fun and meaningful to learn from. So what I would say is realize that patients are your best teachers and try and get a little bit of patient interaction, not too much that you're stressing yourself out, but maybe a little bit of patient interaction earlier than you think. Maybe you shadow a doctor once a week for like an hour or two. Maybe you volunteer at a clinic once or twice a week. Or maybe you get involved with people who need help in the non-clinical setting. Cause it's all gonna be about learning and getting to know people. But that is it. Those are seven tips that I wish I knew. Those are seven things that I wish someone told me before I started med school. If you are starting med school soon, congratulations. It's gonna be an amazing four years. Enjoy them. But if you made it to the end of this video, thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next one.